Welcome to Infinity's Shaman Circle. I have created a sacred space dedicated to you, your body and soul, and our spirit tribe connections. Here, Soul Family Journeys Together. Hello, love, and welcome to Infinity Shaman Circle podcast. I am Infinity, and welcome to episode number five. Uh, this one is all about the physical body map. This is week five of our Soul Quest program journey. And uh, we have done a lot of work so far, for sure. We have uncovered, we have um, seen where we're at on different levels. We're going to have to circle back. The last one we did was the mental body, pretty intense. Um, sorry, the emotional body. Then we, before that was the um, mental body. So we did that. Oh, and then before that, the spiritual body. So we did the spiritual body, the mental body, the emotional body, and now we're getting into the physical body map. And uh, we are going in this order and next <laughs> the energetic body. And then after that, the abundant body. Okay. So we did it in this order. So from the very get go, we're aligning with ourselves spiritually. We're seeing where our head's at. We're seeing how we're feeling, what's going on with all of those two bodies are so deeply enmeshed, obviously the mental body, the emotional body, um, but still a little different. And now we're getting into the physical body. So the physical body, I think, is probably going to be the easiest one for us because the nature of the questions, um, it is the tangible body. <laughs> Most people think we just have the physical body. So we're pretty hopefully in tune with how we're feeling in the physical body, what we're doing with the physical body. There is one area though, when it comes to the physical body, that is, uh, that we go deep on, um, is our sexual energy and our sexual, or sexuality when it comes to the physical body. Of course, sexuality encompasses all the bodies, of course, but we are honing in on it here in the physical body. And I think that makes sense, right? Um, so, or definitely does to me and how I was guided to channel this, this program and these maps. So there are questions in here about your sex, your sexuality, how you feel about yourself and business like that. So it's, not all easy peasy kind of questions that are that are more, you know, surface level, like this is what's going on my body. This is my history with my body. This is, you know, stuff like that. Um, so just so you're aware there are those components here. It's really important for us to be healthy sexually, no matter what's going on with our lives when it comes to relationships with others. We have a relationship with ourselves first, of course, with our own bodies and our sexuality and how we um, experience pleasure or pain sexually and how we see ourselves as a sexual um, being or not um, and all that stuff. So uh, I find sexuality to be absolutely fascinating. I've always been really um, into it. Uh, I just so everybody's aware here, I have been personally celibate for let's just say over 10 years <laughs> it's it's more than that but let's just say over 12 years i've been celibate what that means is no sexual partners whatsoever um up in this business uh <laughs> Once I really spiritually awoken and got all in touch with things, um, I began to really understand just how sacred my body is and my sexuality and my sexual energy and sharing that space with somebody else. 
Um, and I decided that I was going to practice celibacy for myself and my future divine partner or partners. Um, that That is something that I needed to do for myself um, to create a space that was um, as pure as it could possibly be, untainted by others' energy. When I finally um, am with somebody, again, it's going to be very, very special. Um, I made that decision because uh, I had been, and I'll talk about this at another time, but um, get more into it. But I was very casual sexually, um, especially if I was single, not all my life, all the time. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, but definitely... Um, you know, I always found I was very good at sex, have very pleasurable sex. People like having sex with me. And um, it was one place that while I was chronically ill for 40 years of my life, uh, that I felt normal, that I felt good, that I didn't feel pain, that I could lose myself in this and this dance with another person and, and all of that. So, um my relationship with sex is very healthy and open and non-judgmental. I've done sex counseling of a various type and degree for a while. I'll get into that at another time as well. Um, so uh, when it comes to this, just know that I know that it can be difficult to talk about and difficult to think about sometimes and can really trigger a lot of different things when it comes to our bodies, our sexuality, our sexual history, our desires, our traumas, um, and all of that stuff. But it is so important to be real, of course, first with ourselves and then with um, others, uh, when we're talking about the Soul Quest program specifically, um, as open as you can be about your uh, any you know blocks or triggers or hangups or revelations uh, as you go through this map, and to share that in the forum would be fantastic. Well, of course, we're going to be having a review on this map to talk about all of it. Um, and I encourage you to think about what you're going to share as far as if there is, you don't have to share anything in the realm of the whole sexuality thing. But again, just reiterating, um, the more that we are able to share across the board with others and open ourselves up, be authentic, um, uh, expose parts of ourselves that are, you know, it's uncomfortable and we're vulnerable um, is very, very healing when you're in a safe space and uh, where you're not going to be shamed, you're not going to be judged, you're going to be loved, you're going to be supported um, because we see the big picture, the very, very big picture and how important it is to acknowledge yourself and your feelings, to talk things out is so important. And it's one of the things I absolutely love about this program is that we get to do that on various levels and, uh, and that it's healing for you, but it's also here healing for others uh, because inevitably, you know, we can feel like, the island, the the lone wolf, and what we experience is unique to us. And on a lot of levels, it is. We all have a very unique story in the details. But when it comes to themes and experiences and how we feel about stuff, um, we're more alike and share those things than we don't. So to expose yourself in certain ways um, or in any way helps people with their specific thing when they come across it, when they read it, when they watch it, whatever that it is, listen to it. Um, and they go, wow, this person is speaking, a, you know, my story. Like I, I totally resonate with this. This is amazing. This, and it helps really loosen stuff up for everybody else that is in that is in that um, frame of, of mind or has those experiences. Um, I, with me when we're 
working in different ways. When we heal one, we heal all. And that means multiple things. When we heal one thing within us, we heal all the things that need healing a little bit more. We're training ourselves that the healing that we're intentional about on any level, spiritual, energetic, physical, mental, emotional, you know, uh, any of it. We're telling our beingness, our bodies, our consciousness, and the universe that we care and love of ourselves and we want to be as powerful, as clear, as grounded, as connected as we possibly can be. And then those bodies, the energy, the very molecules within us react and respond to that. And so that's one I could go on and on about that itself and itself for so long, but that's one way when we heal, when we heal all what that refers to when we heal, when we heal all refers to this dimension and who, you know, when we heal ourselves, we're healing, um, we're, we're changing the dynamics of our entire beingness to resonate at a higher frequency. And this affects the all, all the humans, all the life on upon Gaia and going out into the universe. It's a frequency, the free, any frequency, which everything has frequency, everything is energy. All the frequencies affect all the frequencies. So when we heal ourselves, we're healing the all as well. So when we heal, when we heal all, so that's the second one. When we heal, when we heal all, and this is the most expansive one, um, is when we heal this one lifetime, we heal all of our incarnations and all of our lifetimes because that loop is eternal and infinite and always connected. We as a soul though, and as time works, we are, uh, not in a linear type of this lifetime, then we end and then we have this lifetime. It doesn't work that way. It's stacked. So any lifetime is going to, um, affect all of the lifetimes and it ripples up and down. Um, I really see it um, vertically instead of horizontally when it comes to timelines. And that's really the way it is. Like every soul I see is like a big skyscraper and each floor is another lifetime and we can access all of those floors. We do have the key card to all of the floors. Um, and we actually, uh, we're one of the floors right now. So, what I'm doing on in this floor affects all affects the entire building and um, whether the other incarnations are conscious of that or not, and most likely they're not, but that's beside the point. Um, we know here that when we, we're healing ourselves in this lifetime, that we're healing all of our lifetimes um, specifically for those exact themes. So if you're healing a wound here about um, the trauma that comes from really being sick or getting really hurt in an accident or anything that's like that causes PTSD and ongoing physical pain and all of that, and you transmute that, you heal from that on all levels, that type of storyline or archetype or however you want to put it for yourself in this lifetime is a direct, direct match for whatever else is going on in your other incarnations. So it's going to radiate to those incarnations at well to motivate and inspire healing consciously or subconsciously um, within those other incarnations that we're co-currently living now. Um, so like I said, that's 
the biggest, most expansive one when it comes to when we heal one, we heal all. Um, so we have those three ways of looking at when we heal one, we heal all. And if we really um, take our our fear, our shame, our shyness, or however you want to put it, that keeps us from, you know, from going out, from expressing, from sharing. Um, uh, hopefully that motivates. Uh, it motivates me uh, because no, I don't always want to be exposed in sharing and, um, and I had to, you know, really see it like, uh, like, like I did want to help others because I healed and I understood and I channeled all this information for myself. And so it was like, there was no way around it. I was meant to experience all of that. So I could, you know, teach it to others and help others in their particular ways. So I was, I understood that I, at some point, one point that I had to do that. Um, but there's levels and gradients to that, of course. And it takes time to get comfortable with sharing. And I appreciate everybody who ever goes on live with me and exposes themselves um, to in, with the intent to ultimately get better and heal in some way. Um, because you're setting aside your fears of being exposed and you're stepping forward for yourself in a way that's really courageous. And so I just want to acknowledge that right now for everybody um, in the future, uh, as we move forward in these live shows or, or even for you and what you're sharing in the forum, or just aside from the Soul Quest program, what you're doing in your own life. And I'm going to take this opportunity right now to uh, remind uh, you or to let you know if you're new to this podcast, by the way, welcome. Um, if you're new to this podcast, that um, I did start it specifically for uh, beginning the Soul Quest program. And um, And it's, it's really, uh, it's the maiden voyage that we're on right now. We're just starting, like I said, week five, it's a nine week program. Um, currently it is, like I said, live. So if you were to join now, you could, you would still be with us um, live. You could still partake of those lives and everything that's going on there. But at any time you can join. And after these live shows, we're gonna have that, we're gonna have this program available um, for for you with all of all of the live shows that you can watch in a replay. And then you can always join me at any of the lives that I do throughout the month. And there's at least two, the very minimum there's two, but I usually do more, um, where you can come and join me as a Soul Quest uh, program member and um, come and ask your questions with me personally. And so that's part of the program that's built in um, as well. So I introduce the new maps through this podcast. So far, that's been all that it's been because I've been pretty busy with the program itself and everything else. Um, I am going to be adding more more episodes uh, related or not related either way. But anyway, that this was the the start of this podcast to have these podcasts for the program is an introduction to each map um, out on Fridays. The new map doesn't come out until um, until Tuesday. And so does the spirit walk. Um, they come out on Tuesdays. But this podcast, the, I was guided to do these podcasts on Friday. Um, as a way to, uh, <laughs> I just seen another triple four. I just keep seeing fours like crazy. Um, putting this podcast out a few days ahead of time is, um, is goes with the, the, uh, the flow of the way this podcast is supposed to go. Meaning that, it's not, I mean, not this podcast, this program is supposed to go, meaning that um, 
it's not like other courses or other programs where you like have a, a, a hard end to any particular level or or uh, section of a of a course, whatever. This first off. <laughs> To reiterate, once you're in this program, you're really never out of it because it's going to stay with you. You're going to be conscious on this new level. It's about being soul connected. So you're always going to be able to go back, answer these questions for yourself, um, be aware on a higher level of all of these questions and assessments through the the eight weeks um, and or the nine weeks, the eight maps. Um, and so there isn't, like I said, there isn't like, I, I want people to understand that it's not like, like, okay, it's done. It's over. Cause it's not, it's never done this. You know, this map is never done. That map is never done. The whole program is really never done. We'll complete all the weeks, but that doesn't mean we're done with the program. Um, so there's that, uh, Secondly, that, you know, we may, you know, get to a point where you may get to a point where you're just like, there's these questions, like, I know I need to get back to them. I have them. Um, I'm doing the program too. And so I have questions. It's like, okay, this is all that came out right now is all that's coming to the surface. I know I need to go back and, and flush more out there. There's more deep, 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 that I'm just, it's not coming right now. And that's okay. Because we know, like, I'll get back to that, it'll come up because the other maps will kind of take us there. Um, and, and the last thing I want to say about the program here is just when it comes to any anxiety about the program, feeling behind or anything like that. Um, there's really no such thing, you're exactly where you're meant to be at any place in life, but especially in this program. This program is meant to be healing, comforting, nurturing, caring, loving, not stressful, not something to be overwhelmed and anxious about. Give yourself breaks, change up how you're doing each week with each map. Um, and you can overlap these podcasts. Like if you're still working on the map and the podcast comes out, you can overlap the podcast. Um, you don't have to wait until we're done, done, then to start over. Um, these podcasts may even help you kind of dislodge something that's going to help you complete your maps. So don't see it so regimented. If you usually take courses and and um, learn or, you know, however you do programs and stuff in a really regimented way, uh, kind of let that go. <laughs> and be with yourself in this program in a really gentle way, but not so gentle that you're like letting yourself get away with shit. Like we want to be responsible. We don't want to let things go. We, none of us want to really want to answer these questions. Like, or just like, I sit down, I do them. I made the program. <laughs> I channeled the program. And I'm like, I don't want to do this right now. Like there's so many other things I'd rather be doing right now. But it's like, no, this is important. This is really what I, this is important for me to do. This is, this is really important work, you know? And uh, we need to help ourselves by telling our bodies, our, our mental, all of our bodies, that we're doing this to help us, to heal us, to grow, to evolve. We're getting on board. Like, just talk to the energy, the molecules, the, what you're all comprised of. And the more that you do that with yourself and really give yourself a, a pep talk, on every level, talk to all your bodies, talk to your spiritual body, talk to your mental body, talk to your emotional body, talk to your physical body, talk to your energetic body, talk to your abundant body. As you go through any and all of these maps um, and you, you know, you know, just crack an earth, right? You're just first <laughs> hit in to get to the deep shit. Just like gearing up, just like you would do any type of exercise or anything really strenuous, anything you're, you've got to mentally prepare, physically prepare. And that's exactly what's going to help you here, um, to, to do this in, in the, in the best frame of mind, um, and to get past any mental hurdles or energetic or physical or emotional hurdles that you have um, of, of things coming up that make you feel uncomfortable about doing the map or answering the questions or anything. And remember, if you have any questions about 
the map itself, like if the questions are confusing and you don't understand them, please put that question in the forum. You don't have to wait until the live. Um, please put that question in the forum and I will see that and answer that and clarify it for you. So you don't have to, to wait on me um, if we're still live. You don't have to wait on me. Okay. Um, I guess that's it when it comes to uh, all of this with the, with the program, with the physical body. Um, I guess last I would just say, just like everything, we just need to be really real. There's a lot of assessments when it comes to this map. Um, and those assessments are, you know, pretend you're somebody else who know, pretend it's your guardian angel assessing how each of these things that it's somebody that, you know, and your guardian angel is perfect because they know it all and you can't omit or deny it is what it is. So pretend you're your guardian angel, talk with your guardian angel about making these assessments and that you're being as real and honest with yourself as you possibly can. Because again, that's how you build these maps. That's how it all comes out when we complete the program to help us as we move forward, uh, really to see what's risen to the top and what, how to organize that and how to plan our lives from that point forward. And the physical body map is going to be, I think the biggest, one of the biggest ones when it comes to improvements and changes, because once we um, assess ourselves with the physical, bo uh, physical body map and see where we need to make changes and improvements. Um, those changes with the physical body map in our physical body will change and spur uh, changes and evolution with our other and healing with our other bodies. Um, so this is a critical time. This, this map, the physical body map, um, and yeah, I'm really excited for this map <laughs> just because of the nature of it. It's a, it's a different, it's a totally different beast than the other ones than all the other ones. And, uh, it's going to really, uh, help us a lot as far as what we need to do as we move forward. So, uh, I would just say that, um, uh, there we go. I would just say that, see it that way, see it that way. See, see it. So it's like, oh, okay. Like the more. I really get real about myself here, the easier it's all going to be, especially with this physical body map. I, I, I feel, I feel like it's going to be like that for us. So, um, so enjoy again, take your time with it. I know that it's, it is a lot of, it is a lot of work and it also isn't at the same time. It's more about creating the space for you to do it and for you to be mentally and emotionally prepared for it as you go through, um, through it. I say, I like to do my, my, uh, my map outside, whether it's been nice enough for me to do that, whether I'm bundled up or not, I just feel like my head's just clear when I'm outside in my garden and, and doing these maps. So try that. Um, take yourself out of, of the home, sit outside on your patio or balcony, go to a park, um, take headphones, listen to some frequency music. There is of course in the, in the program, there's all of this stuff about preparing. So, you know, all that stuff. I'm just saying being a few weeks in here, what's worked for me. And I hope that it helps and works for you too. Um, so I am being guided once more to get into the Oracle. I keep feeling that pull because I'm, I'm like, are we done here? Like, are we done here? And then it's like, not really. Okay. So what we're going to do here is in here real quick. Oh, here I go. Oh, all right. FYI, if you don't know this, I will start yawning when I start doing Oracle or sometimes spirit walks and channeling and stuff. The yawns will come. It's like this change in, 
uh, pressure around me and energy from our guides and guardians. Um, so it's pretty intense energy. Uh, so let's see here. Um, Okay, I think we have a winner here. <laughs> I think we got it. We have the Sacred Geometry Oracle. Uh, it's a shamanistic. Love that. This got my attention real quick when I was looking for uh, a Sacred Geometry deck. I was guided to this a couple years ago, and I... I'm an owl. <laughs> the owl is one of my power totem animals. Um, so anyway, and then we have on the cards itself, we have the Phoenix. This is a really cool deck. Isn't that pretty the way it shines like that with the blue um, foil on the edges? Whoops, if I can get it together. There we go. Um, and it encompasses a lot, which is really, really cool. Um, all sorts of types of medicine, crystal medicine, plant medicine, animal medicine, uh, sacred geometry, frequency medicine, all sorts of business going on with this one. Um, I really, really like this, uh, this deck quite a lot. It's one of my three shaman decks. Um, so, and especially in these last couple of months, the Oracle has come through to really back me up in what I've been saying before that. So let's see if we continue with that today. Um, I'm just going, I'm just lighting some Palo Santo and Sage to clear these out before I do the reading. Mmm, Palo Santo smells so good. I also have some copal in there, some white copal. That's a resin for um, positive energy, clearing space. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If you go to Four Visions Market, and that's F O U R, fourvisionsmarket.com, it's a wonderful, amazing plant medicine and indigenous art. They have art and medicine and all sorts of stuff. Use my code 11 magical 11 for 10% off any order. If you sign up for their um, for their site or their email, you get 15% off, but you can use my my uh, um, discount code anytime. Uh, okay. All right. I am probably going to do a plant medicine uh, podcast sometime in the future. Well, I pro not probably. I definitely will. <laughs> Just not sure exactly when in the future. Um, uh, but I did do one not too long ago. Uh, it is on my YouTube channel. You can check it out there. Uh, Archangelslove.com and the... Uh, Links are in the description. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, okay. All right. Let me just take a second here. Mm, really strong angelic energy here. Soup, like really feeling my guardian angel, archangel, brothers and sisters. Um, really beautiful energy. Okay, so let me try this. Cooperate <laughs> with me. Um, okay. 
<clears throat> I have a new setup here with my desk and all this stuff. And I really like it. I'm still getting used to it. Oh, what do we have here? Okay, we will take that. The flip of ancient sound frequencies. Rebalance energy frequency vibration. So we have this wheel. We have the pyramid with the eye. Um the 963 oh this is the first card card number one um so we have 396 four i think that's this four i'm pretty sure it says 417 yeah 417 528 three sorry 639 741 852 963 174 and 285 so really highlighting all of these frequencies here with the um eye of horus that would be that third eye. Um, so let's get into it and see what this says for card number one. Really don't remember this one. I'm sure that I've picked it before and read about this, but I just, I, I'm not, it's not, I'm not recalling this one because it's about all of them. So let's do it. Okay. <sighs> Today I allow myself to nurture my mind, body, and spirit to bring me back to a state of balance and harmony. Oh, perfect. <laughs> of course, if you have drawn the ancient sound card, you are in need of an overhaul. There we go. Your body may be tired and out of balance, or you may be feeling emotionally and mentally drained. You have been working hard in so many aspects of your life that you need to return to a state of balance and harmony on all levels. Yes, indeed. You may need a healing to deal with a current issue in your life that could have an attachment to a past life. Oh, we did discuss. Whether it be gaining an understanding or a need to forgive and release, it can be done by cutting cords and ties and letting go under the guidance of a light worker. Ah, oh, that would be me. And speaking of cord cutting, there is a cord cutting PDF on my website. Um, if you do a search of my website, you can find it. You can also go to the more section and down towards the bottom. There is a PDF for cord cutting cord resets. It's going to be part of my book that I'm working on. Um, and uh, it's so important to understand uh, cutting cords, but also resetting cords. And that you just don't hear about literally anywhere. So this PDF will tell you all about that. And I have it available because... Um, I knew it was going to take me much longer to finish the book and I, that section got finished and it was revamped from its own ebook that I had. And now it's available for completely for free on my website. Also for free is the practice to the healing practice to cut cords or reset cords. That's also a link right underneath it or right above it on my website. So please check that out. Okay. Uh, because here's the thing, just to say, because when it talks about cutting cords, letting go by guidance of a light worker, she doesn't say, you know, that a, a light worker is doing it for you because nobody can cut cords or reset cords for you. Just like nobody can sleep, exercise, um, eat, and all the other things that we need to do for ourselves. It's right along with that, that you need to do that for yourself. People have asked me to, to help them with it or do it with them. And it's literally like I would be doing the same thing I've, I've given for free. And I didn't feel right making that a service when really this is something that is meant to be done by you for you. Um, not only to cut cords whenever you need to with people and people from your past, but to reset cords. And, and um, it's a very, very powerful healing practice to do. Uh, it is the first level and first phase that people do and that are that they have to work on when they start working with me in my Evolve Now program. Um, so uh, and I, it's there for free for you. So I highly suggest you check that out if you haven't already. If it's been a while since you, um, it, well, if you've only read my ebook that I put out years ago, it was a hot mess and this is so much better. And, uh, and I really, really, really insist that you go and read that. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. So sacred geometry, our world and universe from the microcosm and to the macrocosm has an electromagnetic field, which creates vibrations, which in turn create sound and color. Yeah. Once again, Oracle is reiterating me and my previous discussion. Every sound has a different vibration as does every person, crystal, tree, blade of grass, and so on. Sound vibration carries medicinal tones that can penetrate not only our auric field, but also that of our physical matrix, right down to the cellular core. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. When we are in resonance, we are in balance. By using and surrounding ourselves with certain frequencies or tones within our own field, as well as our surroundings, we can change our vibratory frequencies to live more harmoniously. So basically what that means, we're, we're, we're fine tuning our, or we're changing the, the vibration, the frequency, the tone of our beingness, basically. So when we surround ourselves with positive, energy, it affects us to be more positive. When we surround ourselves with negative energy, it affects us to be more negative. It's really, really simple. The more positive, the more positive and healthy and clear and balanced and grounded and all the things. So that's what I'm always working towards is, is that business right there. Okay. Um, the Sofuegio frequencies are a group of pure musical resonance frequencies developed by Benedictine monk Guido de Arezzo, circa 900 AD. The main being a six-tone scale of electromagnetic frequencies that were believed to have been lost throughout history. These tones were replaced by different running applications over time. They are considered sacred tones used in well-known Gregorian chants and in the hymn to St. John the Baptist. Each one of these tones, when sung in harmony, can bring about spiritual blessings, harmony, healing, and miracles. Practical application. Healing and rebalancing from a cellular level through to the auric field or outer layers of the physical body can be achieved by placing this card on your body while in meditation, listening to the sounds of solfeggio frequencies, and even placing crystals with the card on your body or carrying them around with you. Sleep with the card under your pillow, seek out a light worker to help you shift unwanted energies. Writing is also a fantastic practice. When I need to release, I write down my thoughts and feelings and call upon universal guidance to create the shift needed to put me back on my path. Burning what you have written at full moon enhances the effect of your desired outcomes and goals. Card numerology is nine. And crystal suggestions, apophyllite, singing quartz, Herkimer diamond, and boji stones. Medicine, um, sorry, animal medicine, the eagle. Essences are the frequencies of 528, snake medicine essence, and starlight essence. Very cool. And yes, 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 I can't with this. Um, <laughs> seriously, it's becoming like really silly. This is my magic trick, guys. I've decided... I'm going to leave it all behind and I'm just going to talk and then pull Oracle cards. They're going to say exactly what I just got done saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but there's so much more here, obviously, um, to add to this conversation. So, uh, <laughs> so we're talking about healing on a healing, the physical on a cellular level, um, using the frequencies, but, and she even dropped in here about writing. And of course we're doing writing in our, uh, soul quest program. Hopefully you're doing your writing by, by, with a, with a pen and not just on your computer. If you have to do it that way, that's fine. But this is really meant to be written down as a side note. Um, so, um, 528 is 
a very specific, very specific frequency. Um, but here's how I feel about the frequencies. They're all going to help us heal. Any of these frequencies will have, you'll just kind of naturally gravitate or you'll shift in and out of different frequencies. Sometimes I'm really, I just need the 1111. I need the 963. I need the 428. Uh, I need the five uh, or the uh, 417. Or, you know, I will go through, like, I'll just be guided to very specific frequencies. And I know that no matter what the frequency is or what we, you know, may think this this frequency equals helping us this way. Any frequency helps the whole. So, you know, like if you're list, if you put on a free frequency video on YouTube, you know, for your heart chakra, because the video says this frequency is good for your heart chakra. Your this frequency is going to be good for your entire body. Maybe you're focusing in on the heart chakra, but just so you know, so when you when you work with frequencies. It's more about where you're, you know, and if this is new to you, then, then really take them, take some time to study what the different frequencies are and what they're about, because that is important, but it's kind of like the, the way that I, ha I, I, uh, oh, my wings are itchy. the way that, um, I see cannabis medicine, I don't need to get the hardcore indica knock me on my ass um to put me to sleep weed any weed will do because it's weed <laughs> if i'm tired it's gonna make me more tired um so uh just as an example so you know any frequency is going to be helpful for you um, there are specific frequencies that do, that are very much known for very specific things. And I wouldn't say to go, I'm not going against that in any way. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, sometimes the way music or the way videos are written really kind of makes it seem like it just does this thing. And I've known because of the way I feel energy and with men, we and other people and just experience it in groups and stuff. It's like, oh, it's really just preference. And sometimes like about what, what tone, you know, what, what, yeah, what frequency you're being guided to. So I would say learn them all, but go with that. Lastly, this is about um, harmonizing your own frequency, harmonizing with nature, harmonizing with high vibe, um, uh, things in your life. Like I have a shit ton of plants and, and, and I'm guided to get flowers every time I go to the grocery store, um, and have at least two or three vases with, with, um, with fresh cut flowers. I have plants all I'm in the literally live in the forest, but I have as much and I wish I could I'm trying to figure out how to have more plants in nature in my house. I also have a shit ton of animals. Animals are great for that too. Like let me share with you this amaryllis just because it's going off and it's absolutely ridiculous. Check it out. <laughs> um mwah. kiss your plants mwah. and your and your flowers. It's great to have as much of this positive energy around you um, through plants and and plants and trees and flowers and animals and crystals and anything that helps lift the vibe. This also means staying away from shit that doesn't and really thinking about what it is that you consume on every level, what it is you're a part of, what do you, what do you, um, what do you insert yourself into what, you know, so any show you watch, any movie you watch, any people you're talking to, any place that you go, anything that you're a part of your, you are in that energy, absorbing that energy. It's affecting your frequency. This is why we will like going to some places and we won't like going to some other places because of the vibes and the energy and the tension. Hence like hospitals, courthouses, DMVs. Eh, eh, eh. We don't like them <laughs> because they don't feel good. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of worry and anxiety and 
all sorts of shit. Money's always involved. Oh my God, everybody feeling all this stuff. And we go down there, we're just like, get us the F out of here. I don't like this. Um, of course, not everybody, but a lot of us feel that way. Then we think about going to other places, um, wherever that may be, uh, that you feel really good. And we're like, yes, I'd rather go there. That, you know, there's you know, whatever, a park that you like to go to, a friend's house, uh, a place in nature, uh, you know, even there's certain stores that we're like, oh, I love going to that store. It has high vibes, the stuff in there is high vibrational, it feels really good, um, that sort of thing. I got in real conflict uh, recently that there's a store in town that sells crystals, really amazing crystals, but a few of the people that work there, unfortunately, even around all of that, are very negative. And it's it's a bummer. <laughs> it's, it's a real conflict going on there. Um, but <laughs> I have to get myself in a certain state. Uh, it sucks. But anyway, actually haven't been there in about a year. So anyway, um, to really think about, especially, you know, pertains to the physical body map, really... And when you're in the physical body map work, really paying it to extra attention to the physical body um, and how you're feeling. And especially right now, and whenever it is that you do this program and you're watching um, this video or the videos directly associated and in, in the program um, from the lives and whatever else that we might do, um, that the energies that are in play right now, which are really, really, really intense. I just did a live last night and I highly suggest that you go check it out. It's on my YouTube channel, Archangels Love. And it was for the new moon solar eclipse. Um, awesome show. I was guided to talk a lot about, about um, the new moon and the energies and everything. And then... Um, whatever I was channeled to talk about. And then uh, we got into Oracle, which was really awesome um, as well. Again, backing up stuff that was talked about. And then I facilitated a channeled spirit walk um, guided meditation that was, wow. It was very, very, very wow. <laughs> it was it was huge. It was big. It was huge on so many different levels um, because of what we got going on. So we have the new moon in Aries, the second new moon in Aries. We have the um, the solar eclipse with it. The total so it was an annular and a total solar eclipse. So it did both, um, and in the southern hemisphere, and as well as Mercury retrograde starts today officially officially and i'm doing another live today as a matter of fact um at uh 5 30 pacific for mercury retrograde i'm going to be working with my pendulum this new one that i have here um and in that live show yesterday i did um talk about that and um look at it go Woo, it gets all excited it's very very responsive um so I'll be doing pendulum readings tonight for people who would like one and to join me um, live. So anyway, Mercury retrograde um, is going to make all of this uh, soul quest stuff. I believe and what I feel and what I've gotten from it is so it's, it's going to help us um, review rebalance, restructure. That is Mercury retrograde. So we're going to get all of that. Um, and we have been since the beginning. I mean, Mercury with the shadow period, Mercury retrograde basically takes us to the beginning of this program. And all of these energies, regardless if you're doing it live with me or you do them in the future, these energies are connected with this timeline and anybody that's doing the soul quest program at any point in time. So please know that whether it's mercury retrograde, when you do it or not, it was mercury retrograde when we were doing it and everything that's connected to it. So those energies are going to be in play for you specifically with this program. So just FYI on that. Um, mercury is really, really great with helping us, um, see the truth, it's review, um, really be honest with ourselves. Uh, it's, I always say Mercury, 
it's like, you know, our uncle that knows us so well, and we can be super honest with, and there isn't any judgment there. It's just about making us better. And uh, that's what all of this is about. This program is about healing. It's about awareness. It's about soul connection. It's about all that good stuff. And what I love about this card is that it encompasses all the frequencies. It's not just honing in on one. This is about the whole. This is about like what it says here. You need a, an overhaul. If you draw on this card, da, 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 you are in need of an overhaul. Your body may be tired and out of balance, or you may be feeling emotionally, mentally drained. Like it covers like the entire thing, but it really gets down here into the physical body and um, the our molecular structure and how that is literally mutable. We are mutable. Um, our essence, our physicality on the, on the cellular level is mutable. So what that means is we can change that. And the frequencies and anything um, that is holistic and natural with vibration, whether it's like, like, uh oh, like this beautiful thing that um, I got from my magical assistant Dawn for, uh, I can't remember if it was supposed to be for Christmas or my birthday, but <laughs> I don't think it matters. But, um, and this has an, I don't know if it's going to pick up on this, but this is beautiful. I think, I also actually think this is the 528. Um, beautiful tone. I'm not sure if it'll pick up on this, but, um, with some applications it does and with some it doesn't. But anyway, from literal sound uh, healing using um, uh, whether they're brass bowls or crystal bowls or just listening to the music, all you got to do is put on a video uh, or, or a, a song on Spotify or whatever on Pandora and you're going to get those frequencies. They will help you restructure, reformat, reprogram, rebirth. Um, anything that is of nature will. So air, earth, water, fire will help purify as well. Um, sunlight, moonlight, uh, again, plants, trees, flowers, crystals, uh, flower essence, any and all types of uh, plant medicine. I highly suggest looking into again for visionsmarket.com is freaking amazing. I love it so much. I'm so proud to be an ambassador of four visions market. And I just love every, literally everything I get from there, everything I'm guided to get. I absolutely love. So please check that out. Any of those plant medicines that you're guided to, and there's a lot on four visions for so many different things. And everything comes from the Amazon from tribes, people, it's all authentic and they work in collaboration with the people in the Amazon, all the tribes. And that's where I was born. So I'm very, very tied into that. I, I'm very, very, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm very, very. So uh, anything that you're guided there is awesome and going to help you with in so many ways. So, uh, so yeah, check that out. And um, I guess we are done for today. Thank you for being here and joining me. Um, I loved getting this card again, backing me up all the way is the amazing Oracle. When it talked here about like placing this card on your chest and all of that and doing that. Um, yeah. If you had that, you could do that. You could, uh, uh, but you know, with you could, you could tap into um, the frequencies in so many different ways as, as well. So, um, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for being here with me again, check out archangelslove.com, um, for the soul quest program information. You can start at any time, join us live while we're still, um, while we're still in the live, um, sessions, or you can, um, do it at any time thereafter as well. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed and amazing rest of your day. I appreciate you for spending your time with me, for being here. If you could please rate and um, give me all the stars on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, I would really appreciate it if you could also share. 
with your loved ones, um, the people who you think that would resonate with me and what I do. Greatly appreciated uh, that as well. And lastly, soul family, I appreciate you so much. I love you. I'm with you. Uh, and until we meet again, till next time, mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you. See you later, alligators. Bye.